What's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about use effect hooks. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are coming from class based components and you're trying to figure out how exactly do you map certain methods and certain strategies that you implemented with class based components within functional components. And a couple of those methods are the lifecycle methods like component did mount, component did update and component will unmount. Uh, and so I'm going to show you how we can accomplish all of those using the use effect hook. However, there's one important thing. I want you to forget about everything you understand when it comes to class based components, because when it comes to uh, life cycles of a functional component and the use effect hook, it's a totally different way of thinking. And if you keep trying to map how a uh, class based component maps over to a functional based component, it's just not going to work. So I'm going to try to teach you everything from scratch. And hopefully you guys, uh, by the end of this video, will have a solid understanding of how to accomplish whatever you're trying to accomplish using the use effect hook. Now, I want to do a quick recap on how components work within React. Let's say that we have a component and our application uh, loads this component up. What's going to happen? Well, we're going to render that component out onto the screen, right? Then over the life cycle of a component, uh, you know, based off of certain changes within the component, maybe like a change in props or a change in local state or a change in the context, it's going to cause that component to get re-rendered. So it's going to get re-rendered for one of those uh, handful of reasons. And anytime one of those changes, again, once again, you know, whether it's your props or your local state or your context, if those change, it's going to trigger another render. And this is just going to keep happening over and over again. And that's ultimately what uh, updates the UI for the user. Now, let's see where the use effect falls into place inside this greater picture of React components. So to actually explain what a use effect hook is, it's, it's nothing more than a function. It's a function that runs every single time the component re-renders. Right? And when I see re-renders, I'm talking any time the component renders, the use effect hook is going to run. So let's say we've got our component and it renders for the first time, right? So this is the first time the user sees this component. That's going to trigger a use effect hook to run. And once again, the use effect hook is nothing more than a function, right? It's just a function with the set of instructions that you have, uh, that you have typed out. Now, let's say the component re-renders for one of the usual reasons. What's going to happen then? Well, since the component re-rendered, we're going to run the use effect hook once more, right? And then if the component re-renders once again, guess what's going to happen? Well, the use effect hook is going to run. So that is use effect hook in its purest definition. It's a function that runs every time a component renders. And that includes the first render and the last render. Now I know what you're thinking, you know, what if we don't want this function to run uh, across every single render? What if we only want it to run across certain renders? Well, we're going to dive into all of that. There is some customizability with the hook, uh, so we can actually dictate, you know, when it renders. But I want you to just start out with the simplest definition of a use effect hook, and that is it's a function that runs every single time a component renders. Okay, guys, so let's dive into the code now. So let me quickly go over how I set up my React application. This is a basic React uh, app that I uh, created with Create React App. And we can see here in the index.js, I've just got a React DOM.render. I'm going to render out the app component to the element with an ID of root. Uh, if we take a look at our app component, uh, you'll see that the only thing it does is it's going to render out a component called test component. So this test component is going to be where I show you how to use the use effect hook. And if we take a look at that component, you'll see that right now it's just an empty component. So let's get started on creating our first use effect hook. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, we need to import the use effect hook. So I'm going to import that from the React library. And then within our component, let's just call that hook. All we have to do is do use effect. And then within here, we have to pass in one parameter, which is going to be a function. So I'm going to use an arrow function. And within here, um, all I'm going to do is just do a console.log. So I'm just doing this because I want to see and I want to show you guys exactly when the use effect hook runs. So every time the use effect hook runs, it's going to print this to the console. It's going to say use effect hook ran. So let's save that. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And let's refresh the page. All right, so when I refresh, our component mounts. And you can't see it, but what I can do is I'll just render out maybe something like uh, maybe an H1. I'll just say test component, just so you know that the component's actually getting rendered out into the screen. We'll refresh the page. All right, and you'll see that our use effect hook ran once. Uh, and think about exactly why that is, right? You know, we went over what the use effect hook is and when it runs. It runs whenever the component renders. Our component rendered for the first time onto the screen. 
So it ran once. Now, our component never uh, re-rendered, so we never saw it run ever again. So it just ran once, and that's all. So let's actually test and see if uh, our use effect hook runs every single time our component re-renders. And so what we're going to have to do is I'm going to create a little bit of local state. Uh, so I'm just going to call this um, count. So we're going to create a counter. I know. I'm sure you guys have seen that example a hundred times before. And we'll just say uh, use state. And make sure you import that. I'm going to let VS Code import it for me. And this is going to start out at zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set an h2 tag that's going to print out the contents of count. And then I'm going to set a button that's going to increment the counter. So we'll do a button. And then this is just going to say increment. And then here we'll set up an on click event handler so that when you click it, what's it going to do? It's going to, uh, it's going to call the set count function. And then within here, we're going to get the state object passed in into a function. And we're just going to return state plus plus one. So all this is going to do is when the user clicks the button, it's going to increase our state by one. So let's save that. I'm going to refresh everything. And I'm going to clear this out. So we can see that, well, actually, let me refresh this. OK, so we can see our component rendered out onto the screen for the first time. And our use effect hook ran once. So once again, everything, we already know this. Now let's increment this. And when I increment this, we can see it moved up to one. And so obviously by increasing the state to one, our component has to re-render and our use effect hook ran once again. So just to confirm that our use effect hook runs every single time our component re-renders, I'm going to do a console.log right here. And I'm going to say um, component rendered. So we refresh. Our component renders to the screen for the first time, so we can see it rendered. And then we can see our use effect hook ran. And the order is very important, right? Because the component always renders, and then we run the use effect hook. This is very important to understand. Uh, it's actually not just after, the use effect hook not only um, runs after the component's rendered, it actually runs after the UI gets updated. All right, so now let's increment this. So we increment it by one. And we can see that our component re-rendered and our use effect hook ran once again. Let's do this one more time. So now it goes up to two, it gets re-rendered and we can confirm that with this console.log and we can see that the use effect hook ran once again. So this was just a simple demonstration to show you that the use effect hook runs every single time your component renders. And that's from the first render all the way till the last render. Now let's make a small modification to our application. Let's say that we want to change the window title, right? So that's the window title here. Let's say we want to change it so that it's always going to be synced up with whatever our account value is. So how can, he, how can we accomplish that? Well, think about this. Our component, right? Anytime we increment count, it's going to cause the component to re-render. So every time it re-renders, we want to then update the window title. How exactly can we do that? Well, this is a perfect use case for the use effect hook because we want to do something every single time a component re-renders. So let's go to our application and I'm going to remove this console. Actually, I'm going to keep this console.log, but within this use effect hook, I'm going to say document.title and I'm going to just set this equal to count for now. All right, so anytime this use effect hook runs, uh, we're going to set the document title to be count. And if you recall, this is always going to run when our component renders. And we know that our component will always re-render whenever count changes because count is part of our state. So anytime our state changes, we re-render. Every time we re-render, we run the use effect hook. And then every time we run the use effect hook, we're going to update the document title. So let's save that and let's test this out. I'm going to refresh this. And we can see that. Uh, I know it's a little small for you guys, but that's a zero. So clearly right now it's uh, synced up to our count, right? And we can see that our component rendered and then our use effect hook ran. So let's increment this now. Uh, we can see that it's now a one. Our component got re-rendered. Our use effect hook ran. And then after it ran, it synced our, uh, our document.title to be one, which is what our value of count is. If I hit this again, we can see that once again, we re-rendered the use effect hook ran, and then we updated that value. So hopefully you guys are starting to see how we can actually make use of the use effect hook to actually perform certain actions uh, every time the component gets rendered.
Now, this, there is one minor issue with this. Let's say we introduce a new state object. Let's say we have a const, and we'll call this, uh, this state variable is going to be a Boolean, uh, and it's going to represent if the user uh, wants to see their application in dark mode uh, or just in regular mode. So let's say we do dark mode and then set dark mode. So basically when dark mode, uh, this variable right here, uh, set to true, that means the user wants their application to be shown in dark mode. I'm going to do use state once again. I'm going to set this to false. And then I'm going to add another button. And I'm going to call this uh, toggle dark mode. And then I'm going to set another on click event handler, just like we did before. And then we'll say, uh, we'll call set dark mode. And once again, we can pass an error function. Uh, within that error function, it'll receive the current value of the state. And we'll just return the opposite of that. So this is just going to toggle whatever dark mode is. So if we click this button, if dark mode is false, it's just going to flip it to true. If it's tr set to true, it's going to flip it to false. And it looks like we got an error. Let's just quickly take a look at that. Oh, no error. Uh, it's just, um, we just got a couple of warnings. Uh, that's not a problem though. So let's, uh, let me refresh this. All right. Uh, and so remember our component got rendered onto the screen. So we know that it rendered for the first time and then our use effect hook ran. And once again, our count is synced to the, uh, or sorry, our, our document dot title, uh, got synced to our count. So let's increment this just to make sure we didn't break anything in our application. So we increment this component rendered use effect hook ran perfect. And then our title gets updated accordingly. So we know this works. Now what happens when we select uh, the just dark mode? What do you think is going to happen? Well, let's click this. Well, something interesting happened, right? The component got rendered, which it should because the state changed. However, our use effect hook ran. Now, why did it run, right? We only want our use effect hook to run whenever count changes so that we can update the title. You know, we don't want it to run anytime the user switches between dark mode because those are two separate features. Now, it didn't technically break our application because since count didn't change, it didn't really change anything. But it is important to understand that we are running this use effect hook unnecessarily. So what can we do to make it so that our use effect hook doesn't run after every render? Because in this case, we're going to render whether count changes or whether dark mode changes because both of those will trigger um, a re-rendering of the component because both of them are state. Well, what we can do is we can pass a second, um, second parameter into the use effect because right now we just have this arrow function. What we can do is we can pass a second parameter and this is called a dependency array. So this array is going to tell the use effect hook, it's going to provide a list of, um, basically a list of variables that if they change, it will trigger the use effect hook. Right. And so we know that we want our use effect hook to only run when count changes. So what we would do is we would pass count into the dependency array. And so this is going to tell use effect hook only when count changes, will we run the use effect hook and nothing else. Right. And this is an array. So you can pass as many, um, as many things into this array as you want. So if you also wanted to run with dark mode, like it was running before, this is going to cause it to, uh, run the use effect hook anytime count or dark mode changes. But remember, we just wanted to change whenever uh, we just want it to run whenever count changes. So let's save that and let's give this a test and refresh. All right, let's increment this. You can see that the use effect hook ran Increment it one more. Perfect. Now, if I toggle dark mode, look at that, the component renders, but the use effect hook doesn't run and we can just keep hitting this. It's just going to cause the component to get rendered. So this is how we customize the use effect hook to only run um, on certain renderings, right? If you don't want to use effect hook to run on every single render, then you have to pass in a dependency array. And just to be clear, I, you can have more than one thing in this array. It is an array. You can pass as many things as you want. Now I'm sure you're wondering, you know, can we have more than one use effect hook? And the answer is absolutely. Just like we can have as many instances of the use state hook, we can have as many instances of the use effect hook. So let's keep this use effect hook reserved for um, setting the title to be whatever the count is. And then let's set up a new use effect hook. And like I said, the use effect hook is great for syncing things that fall outside of the React DOM. 
And so one of the common use cases is for working with local storage. So, uh, you know, in a lot of applications, when the user selects, uh, you know, if he wants to be in dark mode or not, uh, we'll save that setting within local storage. So let's find a way to use the use effect hook um, so that the local storage of some value uh, gets synced to whatever dark mode setting the user desires. So what we can do is we know the use effect hook is going to run. And we'll say uh, anytime the use effect hook runs, we're going to set local storage dot set item. And we're going to call this property uh, dark mode. And we're going to set it to whatever the value of dark mode is. Now, do we need to pass uh, anything into our dependency array? Well, let's think about this. Do we want this to run uh, for every single render? Um, because if we don't have a dependency array, it's going to run every single time the component renders. And we know that the component is going to render when dark mode changes, which is we definitely want it to run when that changes. Um, but it's also going to run when count changes. Now, do we actually need it to run when count changes? Absolutely not. So this is an instance where you definitely do want to use the dependency array. So let's pass in our dependency array and we're going to pass in dark mode. So this, once again, is going to ensure that this hook only runs when the value of dark mode changes. So if it flips from true to false or from false to true. So let's actually take a look. And actually, I'm going to do a console.log and I'll call this um, dark mode hook ran just so we can see when it runs. All right. So our component rendered for the first time, and we can see that, and we can see both hooks run as they should. And uh, actually, if we go to, I believe it's application, and we go to local storage, we can see that dark mode is set to false. And that's once again, because the default value is going to be false. So let's go back to console, and let's increment our counter. So we can see that our component rendered, and only the first use effect hook ran, because our first use effect hook has a dependency of count, but the second one has a dependency of dark mode. So this one's going to run only when dark mode changes. All right, so now let's toggle dark mode. So our component rendered. This time, our dark mode hook ran, but our count hook did not, just as we expected. And if we go to our application, we can see that dark mode is now set to true. So now we've found a way to easily sync our local storage with our state value. And if I toggle this, you can see it flips to false. If I toggle this, flips back to true. Okay, so now moving back to our code, I'm going to delete this use effect hook that I just created. And now I want to work on essentially recreating some of the things that we could do with uh, class-based components. And one of those things was implementing the component did mount method, right? And if you recall, the component did mount method is basically a method that would run only when the component mounts or renders for the first time. So how exactly can we accomplish this using functional components? Well, I'm going to tell you, we can do that using the use effect hook. And I want you to see if you can kind of come up with how we would accomplish that, because it's actually a lot simpler than you could even imagine. So let's think about this. We know that the use effect hook, when there's no dependency array, is going to run every single time a component renders. We only want it to render the first time. And if we pass a dependency array, it's only going to re-render, it's only going to run on re-renders whenever whatever's in the dependency changes. Well, think about this. What happens when we don't pass anything into the dependency array? Well, we know that the use effect hook is going to run for the first time when it first renders. And then only when any of these, um, any of the variables that are passed into the dependency, any of the dependencies change, uh, will it re-render or will it rerun the use effect hook? Now, since we don't pass anything into the empty dependency array, nothing's ever going to cause it to rerun the use effect hook. So this is a very easy way to recreate the component did mount method within a functional component. You just pass an empty dependency array. It's going to cause it to run on the first render. And since there's no dependencies and there's nothing to change, right, it never runs again. So let's, let's test this out. I'm going to change this to say uh, component rendered for the first time. And let's save this. And let's, ref let's go back to console. I'm going to refresh this. So we can see component rendered, which is um, just because the component rendered for the first time, and that's from this console.log. And then we say the component rendered for the first time. So 
Uh, so far, so good. And keep in mind, remember the use effect hook always runs after the component gets rendered. Now let's see what happens when we change state. This is going to cause a this is going to trigger a re-render. So if I hit that, we can see component did render, but we did not run our use effect hook again. And if I change dark mode, once again the component renders, but we did not change our uh, use effect or we did not rerun our use effect hook. So once again, this is a nice and easy way to kind of emulate the component did mount logic within a functional component. All you got to do is pass in an empty dependency array. Okay, so now let's tweak our code once again. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of the uh, steps within our use effect hook. And I'm also going to remove our dependency, our empty dependency array. Although for this example, uh, it doesn't actually matter whether you keep it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a timeout. And I'm going to say, uh, we'll pass in our usual function. And uh, we'll just trigger an alert that says, hello. And we'll trigger this. Uh, we'll, say, we'll trigger this after 10 seconds. So you pass in 10,000 for 10,000 milliseconds, which is 10 seconds. So let's hit save. And in this case, since the use effect is, hook is going to run uh, every single time the component renders, we know that every time the component renders, it's going to trigger the set timeout. And then 10 seconds later, it's going to alert us with hello. So let's save that. And let's just wait for this. So after 10 seconds, we should see that alert come up. All right, perfect. Now, what I want to do is let's go to our app component. So our app component is ultimately responsible for, uh, render, um, for calling our test component. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a little bit of state in our app component. So let's import use state. I'll let VS Code import it for me. Uh, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to set this to const show component and set show component equals use state and then we'll set this to true. So what this is going to do is this state is going to represent whether we show this component or not. And I'm going to also set up a button that's going to toggle that state. So we'll say show test component. And then here we'll put in our on click event handler. And we'll call set show component. And then within here, we'll just say state gets passed in and then we'll return the opposite of state. And then for this test component, what I'll do is I'll say, um, We'll say if uh, show component. Uh, we can use the ternary operator. So we say if it's true, then I want to render out test component. And if it's false, I want to uh, return null. There's, al there's also an easier way. What we could also do is just say um, uh, show component. And then I think uh, you do and 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 then test component. So this is basically going to do the same exact thing, um, but it's going to only, only when this is set to true will we render this out. So they both do the same thing, so uh, we'll just remove this one. I like the way this looks a lot better, and then we'll remove this test component as well. And I'll show you guys why I'm doing this. So this is going to uh, give us the ability to actually add and remove this component whenever we want. All right, and so I'm going to refresh this. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is we're going to rerun our code. And that's going to cause test component to get loaded up, and we're going to call this set timeout. But before this 10 seconds ends, I'm going to go to our app.jsx component, and I'm going to remove this test component. And I want to see exactly what happens in this case. You know, will the alert dialog still show up, or will it get properly deleted? So let's save that. Let's refresh. Okay, so the timer's kicked off, and I'm going to remove our test component, and you can see our test component got removed. And let's wait 10 seconds. Let's see if that alert dialog pops up now. Right? And so you can see the alert dialog still popped up despite the fact that that component was removed. So there's clearly some issues with our component, uh, and it looks like it just keeps some stale state with regards to that component. And um, if you come from class-based components, you know that there's a um, that there's a component will unmount method that you can call to kind of clean up any leftover states like the set timeout. Well, we can do the same exact thing with our use effect hook. So if we go to our use effect hook uh, back in uh, test component.jsx, what we can do is we can return something. So 
we can return a function that's going to act as our uh, cleanup method. And here uh, we'll just say clear. Actually, first of all, we have to set this to a constant. So we'll set this to uh, my timer. And what we can say is clear. Uh, what is it? Clear set clear timeout. And then we can clear my timer. So within this function, we have the ability to um, clear out any leftover state. And this should be capitalized. So let's see if this fixes our issue. And I'm going to refresh this. All right. And so the timer kicks off. I'm going to remove our component. And let's see after 10 seconds if that um, hello pop-up actually shows up. All right. So it's been about 10 seconds and it looks like it hasn't showed up. So it looks like our cleanup method uh, in our use effect hook did properly work. All right. And so it's really as simple as that. You just pass, uh, you just return a function and that function is going to have all the instructions to clean up any leftover state. Now, you might be wondering how exactly does this uh, cleanup function actually work? And I think it's important for us to kind of dive in and see the overall order of operations of how and when React actually calls this function to clean up our leftover state. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out this timer and I'm going to just set up a few console.log. So I'm going to say console.log. And here I'm going to pass in a template literal and I'm going to say uh, the count is uh, use effect hook. We'll say use effect count. And then I'm going to pass in the value of count. And then for this return function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say console.log cleanup count for count. All right, so um, we know that every time the component renders, and actually let's pass in our dependency array of count, so this only runs whenever count changes. And so we should see that every time our um, component renders, right, our use effect hook is going to run, and it's going to run, and it's going to say the use effect. Uh, so anytime you see the word use effect here, that means this is the uh, instructions, this is the use effect that's running. So it'll say use effect, and then it'll, plow, it'll print out the current value of count, right? And then Whenever our return function, our cleanup function runs, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say cleanup and account, and then we're going to return the value of count. And I want you to see if you can try and take a guess as to, um, you know, what these values will be for each iteration that we uh, press the increment button. So let's hit save, and I'm going to refresh this. All right, and so we can see that the component rendered for the first time, and then our use effect hook ran once and it ran with the value of zero. So that's our current value. Now, if we increment this, take a look at what happens. This is actually very interesting, right? We render our component. We then clean up count of zero. So the cleanup runs after the component gets rendered. So we clean up the state for when count was zero, right? Since we've already moved on to one, so we're basically cleaning up leftover state that's no longer applicable to the application because we're already on the newer state. We then run use effect hook with the count of value of one. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. You render, you then clean up the previous state, then you run use, effect, use effect hook for the current state. So if we increment once again, let's take a look at what happens. The component gets rendered. We clean up count of one, which was the previous state because we're now on two. And then we run the use effect hook for a count of two, and then it prints that out. So hopefully you guys understand the order of things happen. We render. We clean up previous state, then we run the use effect hook for the current rendering. Okay, so now it's time to move on to some more fun things. I'm going to show you how to fetch data with use effect. So this is a common question. People wonder, how do I actually fetch data using the use effect hook? Well, let's take a look. So going back to our code, let's uh, clean up all of this nonsense. We don't need it. But we're going to implement all of the logic for fetching, uh, fetching our data within our use effect hook. And uh, I always like to uh, send API requests using Axios. So I'm going to install Axios. And while that's running, I'm going to then import Axios. So we'll do import Axios from Axios. Now let's try to run uh, uh, basically a, an API call. Let's uh, try to fetch some data. So uh, what we're going to use is we're going to use the JSON placeholder API. So this is just going to act as an API so that we can fetch some dummy data 
Um, there's no uh, API key you need for this, so that's why I'm kind of using it as an example. Um, but basically, if we go to this posts page right here, so if you send a fetch request, uh, a get request to this URL, you're going to get all of these posts. So let's do that. I'm going to copy this URL. And I'm going to go back here. And so we're going to say uh, const results equals, and then we'll do an axios.get. And then here, I'm just going to pass in the URL. Now, this is an asynchronous call, so I'm going to do uh, the async await syntax. So since this is await, uh, we have to make this async. All right. Now, right now, automatically, my uh, uh, VS code is letting me know that there's some kind of error. So right now, we've already made a kind of important mistake. Uh, so if you just hover over this, it says, um, uh, effect callbacks are synchronous to prevent race conditions. Put the async function um, basically inside another function. So what's happening here is that when you use the async await syntax, this returns an implicit promise, and the use effect hook cannot return a promise. There's only one thing it should return, and that is our cleanup function, right? When we had a you know return, and then you know whatever we wanted to do to clean up the previous state, we can't return a promise, so it's throwing an error. So an easy workaround to that is um, all you have to do is just define a new function. So we can say const uh, fetch data equals, and then take that, and then we'll make this an asynchronous function, and then we'll copy this and put it into there, and then remove the async from the use effect function. And so now you'll see that error went away. So this is a little trick that you can do. Uh, so that you don't have to run into that issue. Uh, and so now all we have to do is just call uh, fetch data. So you just call fetch data. And the reason this ultimately works is that we don't care what this function returns, right? Since this is an asynchronous function, uh, it's going to return a promise. But we don't care if this returns a promise. The issue occurs when the use effect function returns a promise. But since it's this fetch data function returning it, it's not a problem. So all you have to do is just, you just have to put all your asynchronous logic within this function. So let's try to fetch some data. And I'm going to do a console.log. And then we're just going to uh, print out the results of that call. Now, don't run this yet. So instead, let's remove this. And let's fetch those results. And so now we can see that we got the results. And so within the data property, you can see all 100 posts. So it looks like we have successfully retrieved all of our posts. Now, in an actual application, you won't just print out the results. You want to actually store uh, all of the data that you received from your backend API uh, within some state variable. So let's define that now. Uh, so we're going to use the use state hook, and we'll say const posts, and then set posts. So this is going to hold, all of, uh, hold our array of posts. And we'll say use state. Uh, and then uh, we'll set this to an empty array. And what we'll do is here, instead of doing a console.log, let's do a set post. And then we'll set this to results. And then we ultimately only want to pass the actual data. So we'll do results.data. Now, this is actually where I meant to say don't run this yet, because I want you to stop and think about exactly what's happening here. Right. And so you'll see that if we actually run this, we'll end up in an infinite loop. And we could technically hit some kind of rate limiting on our API just because if you end up in a loop in your application, you're sending thousands of requests per second. Uh, and I don't think the JSON placeholder guys, whoever started this API, would be too happy about that. But let's see why exactly we would run into this loop. So we have this use effect hook. And right now, there's no dependency array. Uh, and so since there's no dependency array, we know this hook is going to run every single time the component renders. Right? And so not just the first render, but the second, the third, and all of them. So we fetch data. Uh, so we get all the data back from this API. And then we call set posts. And this is important, right? Because this is local state of the component. Since we are setting posts to be the value that we retrieved from our API, that's going to trigger another render because our state is changing. We are now passing an array that's full of data. And since our state changes, we re-render. And when we re-render, what do we do? Well, we run our use effect hook again. So then we fetch our data again. We then set posts again. And then that's once again going to trigger another render because our state changed. And then we just keep doing this over and over again. And if you want proof of that, 
Uh, let me just do a quick console dot log. I'm just gonna console dot log. Uh, we'll just do um, results dot post. Oh, not results dot posts. Uh, sorry, results dot data. So if I hit save, right? You can see. Look at look at this We're running thousands of requests. So let me uh, refresh that. Whoops, that's not gonna fix it. It's just gonna keep doing it. So let me close it out for now. And let's remove that now. So we've run into some kind of loop. Uh, well, what do we do to actually get around this? Well, I think the easiest thing to do is, well, first of all, I didn't even mean to de delete that. Uh, what we can do is, the only thing that's ultimately breaking this application is the fact that we run this on every render. Right? Why are we fetching our data every single time it renders? We just want to fetch our data when the component mounts. So you guys already know, how do we run a use effect hook only when the component mounts for the first time and then it doesn't run every single render? Well, we pass an empty dependency array. And when you pass that empty dependency array, this is only going to run the first time the component gets rendered. So we fetch our data, we set posts, which will trigger another render. But since we have an empty dependency array, we're not going to run this hook again. So let's save this. And uh, let's go to uh, localhost 3000. Actually, I'm technically running on 3001. And so now we've got our app. And if I do an inspect and then go to our console, we can see that we fetched the data just once. And we didn't end up in this infinite loop. So once again, this shows you how uh, passing in an empty dependency array allows us to run a use effect hook only once when the component renders for the first time. And so this is the basic idea on how to fetch data uh, within a React component. You use the use effect hook, and then you just run this uh, with an empty dependency array. However, there may be times where you do want to pass into dependencies because maybe you want to fetch data um, again, depending on certain things changing, like maybe the user changes his uh, search query or something like that. A lot, of the, a lot of times, any of those things changing would trigger another uh, query to your backend. All right, so now that we know how to fetch data using the use effect hook, let's have a little bit more fun. Uh, I found this uh, open brewery DB. Uh, so we're going to use this API to fetch uh, information about you know breweries. Uh, and so hopefully this is going to show you guys how we can implement a search feature uh, within uh, our React uh, application. And so we have this um, endpoint called search breweries. So if you send a request to uh, api.openbrewerydb.org, let me make this a little bigger. Uh, slash breweries search, and then you pass in a query of whatever you want to search for, it's going to return all the breweries uh, with that name. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to set up a uh, input form so that the user can type in a certain search query. So let's go down here and right below our button, I'm going to put in our input form. All right, and then I'm going to set up state for this uh, uh, this input form. Uh, so I'll say uh, const, and then this will be called search, and then set search equals use state, and then we'll just pass in an empty string. All right, so I'm going to make this a controlled component. So uh, if you've never worked with uh, like text inputs uh, with React, we always want to make it so that the value that the user inputs into the input uh, is always synced up with this search variable. And the way we do that is very simple. First of all, we set the value of the search term to be set to uh, search. And then we set an on click, or sorry, an on change event handler. And then we pass in E. And then we can just say set search to be E.target.value. Uh, so if you haven't worked with inputs and you don't really understand what's happening here, uh, don't worry too much about that, right? The idea behind this video is to really just teach the use effect side of things. All this is going to do is just ensure that whatever value is stored in the input, whatever value the, the user searches into the input will be automatically synced with this search state. So anytime I want to grab whatever that the user wants to query, I can just grab this search variable. All right, and we know how to fetch data, so we can keep all of this here. And I'm gonna change posts to breweries. Um, because it no longer represents a post brewery and then we'll say set brewery actually it's plural so let's do breweries and for now i'm going to comment this out and we'll just print out results 
And let's change this uh, to be the URL of uh, this API. So we'll copy this. I'm going to paste it in here. All right, and we want to remove the dog query. So we don't want to hard code it to dog. And we want to grab this from our search term. So how do we do that? Well, let's change this to a template literal. And then we'll say a dollar and then query. All right, so now in this case, what I also want to do is, uh, first of all, let's, uh, let's take a look at what our changes look like so far. And uh, this should not be query, this should be search. All right, and so we've got our search field. And then look at this, it's already fetched our data for us and we can see uh, we have an empty array and that's just because we patched, uh, we passed an empty search term, that's okay. Um, but we were successfully able to retrieve data from the API. But what I wanna do is something really cool. Uh, I want to make it so that when the user types in something, uh, like a letter, I want it to start searching immediately and then return those results. And then if he types another letter, I want it, uh, it to send another request to the API to search that and then show all the results that start with SF. And then if he types in another letter, I want it to keep searching. So this is a little bit of a different uh, change up from what we saw before in our previous uh, example of where we fetch data from the JSON placeholder where we only wanted to run that when the component rendered. In this case, we wanted to render every single time the user changes the search term. So anytime he changes the letter, deletes, modifies, or adds a letter, I wanted to send a, uh, a request. So how do we do that with the use effect hook? Well, I think it's pretty easy, right? All we have to do is just pass in uh, whenever we want the use effect to run. So we know if there's no dependency array, it's going to run every time it renders. So technically, if we did this, it would technically work. Every time we typed in something, it would work, right? And we could test that out real quick by typing, uh, well, it looks like it didn't work. I'll, once again, that's because uh, I didn't, um, actually, this should work, so let me save this. Okay, so then if I type in, uh, yep, so now if I type in A, you can see it searches, and we can see all the results that start with, or have an A, and then if I search for um, B, right, it then will make another search down here, and then if I search for another letter, Right, it's going to keep searching, F, G, and it just keeps searching, which is nice. However, if I toggle dark mode, it also searches again, right? And that's because, once again, our use effect hook does not have a dependency array, so it's going to fetch every single time it renders. We don't want it to do that. We only want it to fetch data whenever the search term changes. And so the easiest way to do that is we can just pass a dependency array with search. So now if we save this, and let's refresh everything. And so now if I toggle this, it does not fetch data. Uh, didn't mean to do that. So yeah, so I toggle either of these, it doesn't change anything. But if I type in a letter like B, you can see it fetches data. And let me see if I can find uh, one of these to kind of search on. So let's search anything with bear. Uh, so I'm gonna minimize this. If I type in the letter E, we then get results for B, E. Get 26 results. And then if I uh, search for A, you can see we've gone down to 20 results. R, we somehow went up to 44 results. Don't really understand that, but that's okay. So things seem to be working. The last thing I want to do is I would just want to render out um, our results. So I'm going to uh, set breweries now so that we can store this in our state. And I don't know why this is erroring out. The set breweries, breweries. Oh, this is not capitalized. And we're saving results.data because remember, it's going to be stored under the data property. And that's how Axios works. And then let's just render out uh, at the bottom here all of our breweries. So we can do a um, breweries dot map and then here we'll pass in the brewery that we're iterating over and we'll just return how about like a h2 uh, that gives the brewery uh, then brewery name let's see what's the property called uh, we got 
data. And then here's one of the breweries and it does have a name property. So we can grab brewery dot name. And let's save that. And let's search for B. And it's not working. So what's happened here? Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to, you have to return this. And I messed this up. This should be within curly braces. And I think we should be good to go now. And you'll get that warning for that you need to pass in a key prop, but remember, I'm not here to teach um, basic React concepts. I'm here to just teach the use effect hook. So let's not worry about that. Uh, let's just do, uh, let's just search and just see if this updates accordingly. So if I search for E, you can see that the list updates. A, perfect, R, yep. And we get all of the results with bear in it. And obviously some of them have descriptions where they have the word bear and not in the title, but this just shows you how you can use the use effect hook to continually uh, update a user's uh, search results. Uh, and so that's all I wanted to show you guys in this video. Hopefully you guys now have a solid understanding of how use effect hooks work. Uh, you can see that they're really not that complicated. It's just that uh, they have a little bit of a different way of thinking from class-based components where you have the component, you know, did mount, component will, um, uh, will unmount and things like that. You don't want to think of it like that. Instead, you want to think of it as a hook that runs after uh, each and every render. So just as a final thing, I know I said I wrapped up this video, but I want to just quickly recap uh, you know, if you do want to just kind of find a way to kind of synchronize how you did things with class-based components with uh, functional-based components, let me just quickly create a new file here. And I'm just going to call this um, uh, class, class to function dot JS, right? And let's say uh, we want to recreate all of the different methods. So we'll say uh, component did mount how do we accomplish that with the use effect hook easy we just do use effect and then we say empty dependency array so this is only going to run when component first mounts if we want to do uh, basically something like component did update right we would do the same thing uh, with no dependency with no dependency array so it runs on every render and then finally uh, component will unmount. Uh, we'll do the same thing, except we'll pass in a dependency array uh, so that this only runs, uh, first of all, when it mounts for the first time, and then we'll just make sure to uh, return some function, like a console.log. It doesn't really matter what it is. I just needed something there. So that's how you implement those three methods with use effect hooks. But like I said before, you don't want to think of it like that. Instead, think of it in the mentality of hooks and how hooks run whenever components render.